Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday morning trading session uh, with GoPro Trading Academy. It's yours truly and Giffen here to discuss today a topic that's very, very close to my heart, certainly after more than a decade of uh, teaching people uh, how to trade and certainly everything that I wish I knew when I started out as an independent trader uh, well over 15 years ago. I think it's going to be 17 years soon. In any case, uh, this is an absolutely critical element in your success as a trader. What surprises me very often is that people don't know how to manage their risk at a very basic level, uh, specifically with regard to money management when placing their trades. Uh, it's often taken as a secondary criteria. It's a a gung-ho approach is often used, whereas in order to be able to conform to the principal element of success for any long-term successful trader being consistency, you must ensure that you know how to uh, calculate your risk on any individual trade when setting up either an order or placing a trade itself. So in order to illustrate the challenge, however, uh, we're going to discuss a little bit uh, what it is that, what kind of mistakes people make and, and what it is that you need to be thinking about when you want to place a trade. So uh, in order to illustrate that, let me first of all, just go to uh, a chart. Now here we're looking at Euro Yen, which has been one of the more interesting uh, instruments for us over the last several weeks uh, with it jumping in and out of uh, uh, trending conditions and also having um, certainly uh, several overlay trades. But you can see that going back a little bit further, uh, and I assume that you guys can actually see the chart here. So if you can just confirm that, I'm looking at uh, Euro Yen uh, on a chart. So you'll notice that we've got multiple trades that we've been talking about over the last couple of months uh, from our daily impulse trades, which were obviously taken after. Uh, conforming to selection criteria on the higher time frame, uh, to our uh, counter trend and also ranging trades, which uh, conform to uh, a, an overlay strategy that we've been testing over this period. Uh, and the one thing that you will notice is that the, uh, the distance from the entry point to our initial stop varies quite dramatically from trade to trade. So there we're looking at 105 odd pips whereas this overlay back here was uh, under 40. That's a big difference. Uh, going to this uh, daily impulse was about just over 80 pips on that, uh, on the initial risk. Uh, whereas going all the way to, to the right here, you could see that we've actually got an overlay set up at the moment where we're using ATR of about 67 pips for this trade. So the distance from entry to initial stop varies dramatically from trade to trade. Now, there are strategies out there where that is not the case, where your rule set will tell you that your initial distance to stop is a fixed number of pips. But first of all, those are generally uh, very limited uh, strategies in terms of their ability to generate success. Uh, but not only that, they normally will only then apply to a single instrument uh, on a single time frame. Whereas we trade multiple strategies across multiple instruments, across multiple timeframes. Uh, and in order to be able to do that successfully and be consistent, it's absolutely essential that you understand good money management. So what does that mean? Well, put very simply, the most commonly used money management rule is to only risk a certain fixed percentage per trade, trade on trade. Uh, we don't go with fixed dollar amounts as a rule, trade on trade. Uh, the principle of scaling out and scaling in gradually, if your account is both growing or shrinking, is actually very, very important. Uh, there are variations on that, but we don't discuss that because at GoPro Trading, we follow what we believe to be the most uh, successful uh, money management rule out there. And as I say, that is to risk only a fixed percentage trade on trade. So if you're starting off with, let's say, a $10,000 account and you want to risk 1%, well, uh, on your first trade, uh, that would be $100. Uh, 
Should you lose that trade, however, and lose that $100, would mean that your account balance is down to $9,900. So basic maths, hope you guys are following me here. That means that on your next trade, you're not risking $100, you're risking $99. And if your account were to shrink to, let's say, $5,500, which I certainly, it should never do, if, especially if you're trading with uh, GoPro trading and our strategies and money management and everything else that we teach you. But should that happen, then your next trade will have an initial amount at risk of $55, being 1% of 5,500. Conversely, if you are doing well, and just, let's say you build up your account to $14,500, uh, then you'll be risking $145 per trade. Now, what's very important here is that you determine that percentage amount upfront. It's not something that you will be chopping and changing over time. You might get to a certain point, uh, let's say after uh, hitting a certain profit target, where you may decide to change that. Certainly when we trade our funded accounts, uh, we do show you how to change the amount that you risk per trade if you reach certain goals. Uh, and conversely, if you also hit certain uh, loss levels. So um, we generally recommend that you'll start off in a funded account with 0.2% risk per trade. Uh, and if you on your portfolio management manager accounts, then we gradually increase that as you hit certain profit targets. Uh, that allows you to accelerate your uh, progress through the funded trader program. Uh, but the main thing right now for most folks on this call is to realize that you need to pick a certain percentage of your account that you are going to risk per trade and stick to that. Just stick to that. So. I'm going to keep the math simple and just say it's 1% per trade, and then we can work with that. All right, so how do we then do that? Because unfortunately, if you are just to, um, if we just open up a new order ticket over here, I can show you that the volume amount that you put in here will actually determine, uh, it's one of the most important things, that I should say, that will determine whether you in fact do succeed in risking that fixed percentage trade on trade. Now you can see that by default, this uh, is coming up with a 0.01 volume. Now, does that mean that we're risking 1% per trade? Absolutely not. Please don't make that mistake. That is not the case at all. Volume here is in terms of something called lots. Now, people get a bit confused with this, but you shouldn't really, because lots really is similar to, if you were going to buy shares on the stock exchange, uh, in um, Apple or whatever the case may be, you would, uh, you would pick a certain number of shares that you're going to trade, which means that if the value of uh, one share or the company goes up, you would be gaining or losing, losing a certain dollar amount per share. Uh, it's a similar principle here. Uh, we don't need to worry too much about it, but for a standard um, a lot size, typically what you would be risking with a standard broker is $100,000 per lot of whatever currency you're trading. So if we were trading, let's say in this case, Euro Yen, uh, basically what we, we would be doing with one lot of Euro Yen is risking $100,000 uh, worth of Yen, but being denominated in Euro. So uh, don't worry too much about that, but just think about this as if you were buying and selling shares. Really quite simple. In any event, that volume over there determines how much you make or lose per pip. Absolutely crucial to understand that. If we were on a US dollar term pair, which this isn't, this is a, a, a JPY term pair, but if this was, let's say, Euro USD uh, or GBP USD, the term currency being the second currency in the name, then if we were risking one lot, which would be 1.0 over here, if that was the case, uh, that would mean that we would be making or losing $10 per pip, which I'm sure you'll agree with me is quite a lot of money and you'd need to have a pretty sizable account for that to be something that you'd be doing. Uh, for most folks starting out on smaller accounts, uh, you would very often be finding yourself trading with micro lots, which is one hundredth, obviously, of a standard lot, or even mini lots, which is one tenth. So, obviously, at a mini lot, 
uh, with a US dollar term pair, we would be making or losing one tenth of what you would be making or losing with a lot, which therefore is one dollar per pip. And of course, if you go down to a micro lot, you'd be making or losing, uh, in this case, uh, 10 US cents per pip. So if we made that, let's say six, that would mean that we'd be making 60 cents or losing 60 cents per pip. Now the question then is how do we put all of this together to ensure that we are risking that fixed amount per trade if this is not actually uh, representing that percentage amount and that's where, where a position size calculator actually comes in. Now there's a few ways of doing that but before we do that I just want to now show you an additional challenge that we actually have with this as I mentioned there, we would be calculating that on a US dollar term pair, but what if it was something like what we've got here, the Euro Yen or Euro GBP or um, let's say uh, uh, Aussie CAD. Uh, what about those where the term currency is not US dollars? What do we do then? In fact, even uh, the USD JPY or USD CAD or USD Swiss, none of those are US dollar term currencies. How do we actually then uh, add that into the equation? Well, what I'm going to do now is show you uh, what, what all of this sort of means, but with bearing in mind that you don't actually have to worry about this if you've got a good position size calculator. However, the purpose of today's training is to open your mind to how this all works so that even though you'd be using tools in the future, you actually understand how it is that you are managing your money correctly and what the implications are for that for you in your money management. Right, so uh, for those of you who are members of the Academy, I assume that you've been through all of these modules and you'll notice that within module five, elements of a good trade, uh, a module uh, or lesson 3A is all about money management, which is the first of the three uh, management elements in that makes up a good trade. So remember that this is one of the things, as I've told many of you in your coaching, that can completely undo you just with a simple human error. You'll have noticed there in that order ticket that it's pretty easy to transpose uh, the decimal point and make a mistake with that. I've seen people do that. Uh, and that can lead to you risking 10 times or even 100 times what you intended to risk on an individual trade. So uh, that is a common cause for new traders who are not used to this concept of money management and how to do it properly for blowing their accounts. So we really want to help you avoid doing that. And that's why this is such an important area for you to get right. Uh, the other elements, again, just for me to, to reiterate here in this, is that good money management is essential if you're going to be consistent in your trading. Uh, in the past, I've had people who uh, have, I mean, if you just keep the math simple, let's say you make 1% per trade or lose 1% per trade. If you don't do the money management right, then on some trades, you might be making 0.3%, and on others, you might be losing 4%. Uh, because of the variability involved with the distance in pips from entry to initial stop. It's absolutely essential that you don't allow that to happen. And certainly if you want to introduce convexity into your trading, which is obviously what we teach here at GoPro, you need to be absolutely rigorously consistent with the initial risk that you're placing or you're taking on any individual trade that you place. Right, so um, I've already mentioned how we uh, can make or lose $10 per, per, per lot if the US dollar is the term currency. Uh, but unfortunately, that then gets even more variable when uh, we start having a non, uh, the US dollar is not the term currency uh, in the uh, currency pair. In order to actually calculate your uh, risk uh, and also uh, the lot size in particular, you need to get these amounts into a calculation. And the calculation, I explain it here, for those of you members, you've got the, the video that you can go through over and over again that will help you to understand that. But the calculation here is your position size, which is the volume that we saw there in our order ticket. In standard lots, 
is equal to uh, Ri, which over here is the, um, uh, the uh, amount that you actually want to risk in dollars. So we need to work that out. Uh, the amount that you want to risk in dollars obviously is dependent on the percentage you want to risk. So we've already worked that out. If it was a $10,000 account and you're risking 1% per trade, then RI obviously would be 100. So the position size would be 100 times 0 0.1 in this case. And that all would need to be divided by the pips at risk, which is the distance in pips from entry to initial stop, uh, multiplied by the term currencies exchange rate. And that factor takes into account the fact that most of the currency pairs we're trading do not have the US dollar as the term currency. It also has to be said that if uh, uh, that brings us back to something like the um, uh, USD JPY, you would need to use the inverse of that. So it would be need to be one divided by all of this. Now, I'm sure all of this starts looking very complicated for you. And for anyone where this is new to them, uh, this looks overly complicated. Well, rest assured that you don't need to worry about this if you have a position size calculator. However, I really do recommend that you uh, learn the underlying basis for this calculation as we've got here. Right, so as promised, the, um, the objective today is to show you how you can actually do this relatively easily. And we're going to start off with um, using the free position size calculator that is available online at my FX book. Now, the reason I like using my FX book, and by the way, if you want to find it, there is the URL. Uh, it's myfxbook.com, Forex calculators, position size. Uh, the reason I like this is because it automatically pulls in T here. So the exchange rate of the term currency. Most of the others, you need to input that yourself manually and all of that obviously creates more scope for human error. So it pulls it in automatically, but there are some other things that you need to then uh, determine for yourself. Uh, first of all, obviously the currency pair, because that will help us to ensure that we are uh, uh, selecting the correct term currency, in this case, Euro JPY. Our account currency by default is generally US dollars. That's uh, normally what we recommend. Uh, so if I was looking at this particular account, and this is just a, uh, it's one of our funded accounts, one of the smaller ones uh, that, that uh, I play around with. This is a real money account, uh, relatively small, uh, 5,004. I'm just going to round that off, 5,004. Just uh, pop the uh, account size in there. So that's obviously your account balance. Uh, we looking to, in this case, we're just going to risk 1%. Per trade, you'll notice that you can switch to that fixed money amount. Uh, I don't recommend that you do that. We just um, we risking that percentage, uh, fixed percentage amount per trade. Right. Uh, what about the um, uh, the 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 uh, this this last number over here? Is the stop loss and pips is what I call pips at risk, as you'll recall from from this. So pips at risk here is the pip distance from our entry to the initial stop. It's the same number, stop loss in pips. What you do not want to do, folks, sorry about jumping from screen to screen, but what you do not want to do here is put the stop loss price level in here. I've seen people do that by accident as well, or by mistake. Uh, that's a very quick way to blow your account as well. So stop loss pips is not that price level at all, or should I say perhaps, that one, it's not the price level, it's the distance in pips from the entry to the initial stop, which in this case uh, was called it 67 pips. So we'll put that in there, 67. Uh, you can ignore contract size. Remember I did mention before that by default, uh, it's 100,000. Uh, that's standard for lot size in uh, the spot Forex market. Um, and you can see that it's pulling in the uh, ask price for the, the, the term currency rate. And then all I need to do is hit the calculate button. And it's telling me that, first of all, I'm risking $50.04, which is exactly 1% of that. And that's correct. Uh, and the lot size I need to use here is 0 0.081. So if we go back to our uh, order ticket that we looked at earlier, that would be what this number is here. Now you can see that we don't have three decimals, so you'd need to round it off. 
to 0 0.08. And that would be the correct number to put in here. One quick tip, folks, if you are using the order ticket is you must put this number in first. If you were to uh, put in your other order values first and then come back to that, you will see that it actually goes and changes those. And we just don't want that to happen. So it's the last number, in fact, that you will calculate when working out your, uh, the timing, um, your entry, your initial stop, your take profit. Uh, you, only, you can only work this out after you have entry and stop loss because those determine your pips at risk. So having done that, you can work this number out, you put it in first, and then you go on to input all of the others. Now, once again, this is a very manual way to do it. Uh, and as Impino is pointing out, what about indices and commodities? Uh, you know, we, we don't, there are limitations on that. Certainly, you know, as you say, my FX book doesn't cater for that. So you need to be able to uh, work those out for yourself or have a position size calculator that does it for you. Now, there are other um, free position size calculators out there. Uh, so uh, many of them do include the commodities and indices and so on. Uh, you just need to remember that uh, if it's not a US dollar denominated instrument, which many of them are, such as the S&P and what have you, uh, then you would need to work out the, uh, or in input the, the exchange rate uh, of whatever the denomination or term currency is back to US dollars. Uh, right, so that would be how we work out that position size. Everything else uh, I'd be able to do manually. I'm not going to do all of that right now because that's not the purpose of today. Uh, but there is obviously an easier way for those of you who are Academy members. Um, you get our position size calculator, uh, which makes life uh, substantially easier. I'm just going to uh, pop up to uh, an instrument where I can show that. Uh, or maybe yeah, let me just uh, install it here. So uh, you'd need to have it installed, obviously, for those of you uh, who are members, there is uh, an instruction video on installing the position size calculator, uh, but that's what it looks like. Uh, and in this case, what um, we would need to do potentially, I'm actually going to, I'm going to place a sample trade here for you, uh, not specific to an actual strategy that we're trading at the moment, but uh, just a pretend one. Uh, where by using this position size calculator, it simplifies your life dramatically. Uh, all you need, in fact, now, instead of all of those numbers that you need to insert into the uh, MyFX book position size calculator, uh, all you need is to tell the calculator what your order level is, your entry level for your order, and your initial stop. If you do have a fixed take profit, you can do that as well, although you can also amend the trade afterwards for that. It's absolutely essential, however, that you have the entry level and the initial stop. Those of you who are funded account traders, you know that our um, providers, our funding providers, the people who give you the money to trade are very strict about you needing to have your stop in place uh, almost immediately when you place an order or a trade. All right, so what we're going to do uh, is simply uh, pretend that we're going to be placing an order with entry above the high of today's candle, uh, such as it is so far, and our initial stop below the low. So I'm always pretending that we've got a trend continuation strategy here and that today's candle is coming to an end, which it isn't, but uh, let's just pretend for the purposes of today's trading that that is the case. Right, so having done that, uh, if I want to be more exact about it, uh, and of course, I'm also using our, uh, our broker here for the funded account where our spreads are basically zero, especially on Euro USD. So uh, I don't need to worry about building and spread for this. If you are using a, um, another broker where your spreads are more significant, you need to add spread to it. But what I'm gonna do here is take the high of the current candle, which looking at our data window bottom left is 1.20437. And that would be my, um, let's make that pending, 1.20437. Uh, that would be that initial level. Uh, and our initial stop is 
going to be below the low. I'm just going to stick it straight on the uh, the low, 1.20035, which it's there already. Okay, so that's perfect. Uh, now what I'm going to do is actually take these two uh, guidelines out and use the, uh, the position size calculator to actually show me those levels. So by just hitting the hide lines, show lines, uh, button here on the calculator, it shows them uh, or takes them away. Now, if I wanted to have a take profit uh, with yesterday's ATR, which is 60 pips, it would need to be 60 pips above our entry, which would be 1.21037, I think. 1.21037. There we go. You'll see a yellow line pop up giving us our uh, intended take profit. Now, all the other things that you can look at with the position size calculator that are quite useful. Well, first of all, you'll notice that the account balance is being pulled in automatically. So you don't need to worry about that. Already by default, got risk percent 1%. If you are doing a different percent level, please make sure that you change that uh, when you're trading. And in fact, as I say, when we uh, use our um, funded accounts, when you're starting off with your, your evaluation account, we risk only 0.2%. It's telling us that we will actually be risking if it, we were able to get an exact amount of $50.03. But in reality, because of that rounding issue, remember this is a two decimal broker for uh, position sizing, uh, we are in fact risking slightly less than that, 0.96%, which works out at $48.24. And that's before any slippage or anything else like that. It's also giving us our uh, potential reward uh, based on our take profit, and also then calculates the reward to risk ratio. And for those of you who trade the, um, the continuation strategies, such as the short kickstart and so on, you'll recall that we have a minimum reward to risk ratio requirement of 1.2. So that is met here, 1.49, that's great. And you can see ultimately this is the position size that has been worked out. Uh, if I wanted to trade 0.2%, um, if I was doing that, remember, if that was part of my rule set, then you'll see everything changes. The, uh, the amount that I'm actually risking, the position size obviously is down to 0 0.02. Uh, all of that has now changed, but the reward to risk clearly will stay the same. Uh, and then if I wanted to actually place that, we just uh, use our hotkey for the position size calculator, uh, which for me is Alt-P. And you need to just make sure your auto trading is activated. And there it is. Uh, it takes literally a few seconds to do that. So the reason I'm showing you this folks is because although I really believe it's essential that you understand the underlying calculations for money management, uh, it takes a while maybe to get your head around that. Uh, we've got that in the academy and that video and you can watch this, the recording of this video as well. Uh, then it really helps you to avoid making uh, common errors that many uh, budding or novice traders tend to make. Uh, the, the kind of errors that you make with position sizing and money management can be lethal. Uh, they are so easy to make, human error creeps in, you need to avoid human error as much as possible and avoid the possibility of uh, of blowing your account or losing substantially more than what you intended uh, in your early trading career. All right, folks, so uh, that's a general overview of money management for, for trading. I've gone into some of the details behind how it all works. Uh, let's just go back to this module here. Yep, that's perfect. Uh, so although you might think that this calculation is a little bit too much to get your head around, I assure you, it's actually quite simple. Uh, all you are doing is making sure that you are risking the correct amount trade on trade. That makes it possible for you to be consistent in your trading, which ultimately is an absolute prerequisite for you to be successful. Right, folks, any questions? Right, so the question is about volume. 
first of all, uh, if you want to understand volume, you just need to really compare it to number of shares. If you if you uh, are trading with a volume of let's say 0 0.1, that means it's 0 0.1 standard lots or one mini lot. Uh, if it's a US dollar term pair, you will be making or losing one dollar per pip. But obviously that does vary if the term currency is not US dollars. And that's why it's so important to use a position size calculator. Uh, but really it's if you if you double it, you're going to make or lose uh, twice as much per pip. That's the main thing. Uh, so in order to get your, your volume right, you need to use that calculation that we've got uh, in the, um, that, I, that I showed you in the management rules part one here. Uh, but if you wanted to do that manually, you really are going to be making your life exceptionally difficult. And that's what the position size calculator is for. All right. So maximum drawdown, on the other hand, uh, is also going to be a function of how much you risk per trade. So uh, if you've got a $10,000 account and you're risking uh, $100 per trade and you have 10 losers in a row, you're going to have lost $1,000. So your drawdown will be $1,000. And that will be uh, your relative drawdown from the starting point of $10,000. And if that was your opening account balance, that will also be your absolute drawdown. Uh, whereas if you start on 10,000 and you make $1,000 uh, and then lose 500, well, you don't have any absolute drawdown because you're still above your starting point of 10,000 but it will be a relative drawdown of 500 divided by 11,000, which is uh, just under 5%, basically. It's very, very important uh, to be aware of that because drawdown on your account is the, the, the source of total risk. I mean, let's face it, the only thing that we really care about in trading is the possibility of losing all our money. I mean, that's, that is what the risk is. Uh, so, uh, everything else is a derivative of that, if you like. All, all the other things that could cause that or make that happen are, are risk topics that we need to understand so as to look to avoid losing the money. And that is, that is uh, what the risk is. So um, the, each strategy will have its own statistical personality and built into that statistical personality over the long term is the maximum amount that that strategy uh, will lose in a worst case scenario, which would be the maximum drawdown for that strategy. So generally we assume that the worst case scenario has not yet happened. That's why we are always uh, so conservative, uh, but we do go to great uh, lengths to measure historically what the worst case scenario was in the past. Uh, and, you know, we discuss that with our clients and so on as well, when they're looking to invest so that uh, everyone understands the situation. Uh, but you need to be 100% aware of what the maximum potential drawdown on your account is based on the strategies you're trading. Now, obviously, that's tied into position size. So if I'm risking 1% per trade and I have 10 losers in a row, uh, you know, assuming, uh, obviously, it, it comes down a bit, but we'd be, have, have lost uh, somewhere around 9% because that's scaling down. Uh, whereas if I'm risking half a percent per trade, my maximum drawdown would be half of that. So uh, it does have a big impact uh, on the maximum drawdown uh, based on uh, what position size or how much you risk per trade. Absolutely. Hope that answers that question. Right, intraday trading. Right, we're getting a little bit off topic here, but intraday trading is really strategies that are uh, on a lower time frame than end of day. So uh, you have uh, end of day strategies where you only look at your charts and manage them once a day. Uh, obviously, you can go higher than that. We have weekly strategies as well. Uh, or you could trade strategies on a weekly time frame and do uh, and trade on those higher time frames. Intraday is anything below that, so four hour, one hour, and down. It's a pleasure.